Hi Pisces, welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. It's Raina here, and a Bliss Report is just kind of like my abundance reports that I did last year, uh, every couple of months, that were focused on career matters, money matters, and this I'm broadening it to anything that makes you want to follow your bliss. So hopefully you can get a inspirational message from this. I kind of like doing these types of readings for a change of pace because it's not always just about the day-to-day -day events. It can be about your hopes and wishes. And uh, one thing I want to let you know, and I don't remember exactly what date this is going to start happening. It's going to be in late January. I'm recording this on the 19th. It's the 19th, I think, yeah. So it'll probably be in about a week from now uh, that Mars is going to be in Sagittarius, and that's your 10th house of career. So you may be, during the mon months of late January, going, you know, all through February, I think it's until early March, you might be very ambitious uh, for career matters. You've already had Saturn in that sector for two and a half years. So you um, have been laying some groundwork in your career, Pisces, and now you're trying to really execute your plans, perhaps. So I'm going to be doing a Morgan Greer tarot spread, and then I'm going to pick a card from the Akashic Tarot as well as the Keepers of the Light Oracle. So that should be interesting. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be a challenge, I think. Cool. Like it. I like it. got this one before the Buddha prepares 13 and keepers of the light okay bring this to the side because I read those last okay so the overall focus for this time period is the two of wands. Um, I did get a, the, the lover's card is the spiritual message, which can also be choice. Some of you may be deciding whether or not to relocate uh, for whatever reason. Maybe you're just, there's a place that you would rather live because of the weather, um, because of the people, or it could be career related for sure. Maybe you have children and you think that they have better uh, school systems, um, whatever, but something is causing you to contemplate a move, but there may be a part of you that is torn, that would like to, that likes certain things about your current circumstance. So you can't decide which one <clears throat> which direction to go in. We have in the past position the Knight of Cups. In this context, this could be an offer that you have received that is connected to a job or maybe even um, a friendship where somebody that you know says, hey, why don't you come back home or just, you know, if it's the hometown or a college friend, oh yeah, I'm living so-and-so, why don't you, you know, we're such great friends, why don't you come and live where I live? And it's very tempting to you because since it's uh, the Knight of Cups, 
it's it's kind of like a soulful offer. So for somebody like a Pisces, this is the kind of thing that stirs your heart, that makes you feel like the other person cares about you. It is possible that this is a romantic relationship where that person's influence is factoring into your decision to want possibly relocate. Because even here we have as a spiritual message with the lover's card, if it is somebody that is a romantic interest, the lover's card suggests that you have to decide whether or not you have a very deep relationship or whether or not it's just kind of shallow um, based on whether or not to take the plunge and to actually uproot your life. In general, this could be talking about partnership. Um, so perhaps that's what you're deciding. Maybe it's not about moving. Maybe it's about whether or not to join forces with another party and become like um, a team. And again, if you feel like you trust this person and the two of you have good chemistry, then maybe it could work. <clears throat> Excuse me. The challenge is the Four of Cups. So here's another, you know, we're talking about these offers. And this is a an offer of sorts. This person is holding out a cup from the clouds. This could uh, suggest that you are... Um, you are aware that you are being given an offer, but you're not quite sure whether or not you're enthused about it. As a matter of fact, you may be quite uninterested in this offer, whether it's a, a romantic partner um, or a business opportunity. But what I think, if that's the case, you're mind goes into overdrive and says, well, you know, you're not getting any younger, so you might as well accept this romantic proposal. Yeah, you know, I'm not that into him, but who knows, maybe after time he'll grow on me like, you know, a mold or something, and I'll just really, it'll be great. You know, I'm just being too, I'm being too picky, blah, 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 you know, the typical things. If it's, um, if it's something to do with a partnership, you may have your reservations about this person in terms of their reliability, and you may talk yourself out of it. Pisces people tend to be directed by their heart, and it's easy uh, to direct by or to control a Pisces person by appealing to their emotional nature. Now, yes, I am broad brushing. I'm talking about that archetype of what Pisces represents, not about any Pisces people individually. But your emotions really are the best gauge for what to do. And if you feel like kind of underwhelmed by something, then that should tell you that it's not the right decision to make. The advice of what's coming in is represented by the Six of Pentacles. In this particular case, what I would say is look for situations where the feeling is mutual, where you feel you give the same value to a particular person, place, or thing that they do towards you. Um, instead of these lopsided situations where one person is very... Um, happy about a situation and the other person is indifferent. If you find that this is a pattern for you, it's because you're not being discriminating enough. You're too open for anything and that leaves you vulnerable to, to this type of thing arising. The outcome is a card that I love so much, the Magician card. This is about you Stepping into your own power, Pisces, and really understanding that you 
are the master of your destiny. If you don't like something that's going on for you, you have the power to change it and not look back and not regret the fact that um, you did one thing, you, that you wasted so much time on a situation that it didn't interest you in the first place, but you felt this kind of fear-based thinking that you, I better do this or I better, you know, appreciate this because who knows what else is out there for me. Um, the magician is somebody who is self-reliant and they take what they have as modest as it may be and they build upon it but they take those initial steps. It's an initiating type of energy. So if you have been wanting to start your own business, February and the end of January and all of February are prime times for this because of the forward moving nature of the planets. Starting in March, there are going to be some retrogrades that we have to contend with. So uh, the end result is empowerment, which is wonderful. Now let's look at your oracle cards, although this is called the Akashic Tarot, so, but it's totally different than the regular tarot, including the number of cards that are involved in it. Isn't that a beautiful picture? I love that picture. <clears throat> the Buddha sits meditating. The hills in the background are dotted with other people meditating and patiently waiting for him to speak. But he won't move a muscle until he's ready. This card shows a time of inner preparation before action. Before you can reach outside yourself, you must reach within to find your power your purpose, and your direction. This period of time may feel a little like waiting, and it appears so in your exterior life because some points of action seem to be at a standstill. Really, though, you're just taking the time that you require to prepare and to truly step into your power. Don't be in a hurry. The time to act is coming, and when it's here, your strength will be absolute. Okay, and now we're going to look at charity. Prayer and contemplation. Connect with heaven. Ask and you shall receive. Faith, hope, and charity are a trinity of archangels who are dedicated to help us regain our natural... I'll put this right here. Traits of kindness, trust, and faith in the highest good. Charity is the twin flame of Archangel Shamuel. She has a great spirit that encourages us to undertake the spiritual practices of prayer and meditation. Prayer is the way we speak with the divine, and meditation is the way we open ourselves to receive the answers we need to hear. The, the, the simple way of putting it is, prayer is talking to God, and meditation is listening to God. Charity is also the angel who kisses the forehead of all those who pray in support of others. She absolutely loves to see this kindness because it creates an inspirational healing wave of goodwill to the world. The powerful Archangel Charity is drawing close to you at this time because she has recognized that you have goodness in your heart and you have put others first. She brings you thanks and support. Move into prayer and meditation with regard to any decisions you have to make at this time. You are being guided to take the time to breathe and receive. Know that you will have a real surge of intuition when it's time to move forwards. Thank the angels for guiding you towards your highest good and welcome charity into the space with you. 
Wow. Well, that sounds very nice and positive. So I hope that you enjoyed this Pisces. If you would like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com, and I wish you a wonderful remainder of January and a magical February. Uh, for those of you born in February, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves. Bye.